Hallo, 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 hallo. Hallo. Um, is it good? Uh, good evening, all of you. Welcome to the Kiran Abe Museum of Art. Uh, I'm Neha. I'm part of the curatorial team working uh, um, with the exhibitions and programs. Uh, uh, after a long time, we are having a, a great turnout. Despite the rains, I would still call it great. I mean, I'm, I'm sure people will join us eventually. And we are so happy to invite uh, amongst us Mr. E.P. Unni, one of the foremost cartoonists of Indian media and newsprint. Um, before I uh, invite him on the stage, I'm really glad to share that uh, we, this pa uh, we did have an exhibition on uh, cartoons and uh, satire where drawing uh, and such media were uh, depicted, including many several artists. And uh, <coughs> I can like I'd like to read out the name of the exhibition. In 2019, uh, held an held an exhibition called the Common Course, which emphasized on a humorous ride through the caricatures, satirical, poetical, and political commentaries of our uh, four artists of modern India, namely Gaganeth Nath Tagore, Chitta Prasad, K G Subramanian, and R K Lakshman. Stereotypes contradictory of critical impressions, resistance, bold altering signals to civic, civic and political consciousness and moral crises of colonial India, marked in the political bo posters, books, and content from various published material made the core of the exhibition. Three years down the line, we feel that the topic, that of addressing social serious issues through humor is ever relevant. Having Mr. Unni amongst us and listening to his insights on the same will add to our understandings. We are happy that even though the exhibition was done three years um, ago, we are able to resonate with the ideas even now. And I'm sure in the coming times, it will be even more stronger. Um, can I invite Mr. Unni on the dais? Uh, a little. Um, yeah, can we have the column mic still? Uh, I'm sure he definitely doesn't require any introduction. But uh, he was born in 1955 in Palakkad, Kerala. He only completed a degree in physics before working briefly as a banker. His interest in cartooning saw fruition with his first cartoon published in Shankar Weekly in 1973. He became a professional cartoonist by 1977, after which he worked in Hindu. And after 12 years of working with Hindu, he uh, joined the Indian Express. Uh, he's published several books, which I would like to name, uh, including Spices and Souls, A Doodler's Journey Through Kerala, 2001, uh, Language and Landscapes and Livelihoods, Sketches and Notes on Five Drought-Prone Districts of Andhra Pradesh, 2003, Business as Usual, Journey of the Indian Express Cartoonist, 2009, Santa and the Scribes, Making of Fort Kochi, 2014, and several more. Um, he was facilitated with the uh, uh, Lifetime Achievement Award by the Indian Institute of Cartoonists in 2019. So these are a few <laughs> achievements to name. And I would welcome Mr. Rooney again 
to start the lecture and we are eagerly waiting for. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Neha. Am I audible? So, uh, I must thank the Kiranada Museum of Art for this evening. Uh, it's not every day that a cartoonist gets uh, invited for a uh, show in an art gallery because of all space is very precious and it's rarely that it comes uh, to a cartoonist in India. Of course, the, the things are slow, so kind of changing in the last four or five years. Binali started calling cartoonists, even some major galleries have started inviting cartoonists. I think it's a good trend. Because we have had a long, a fairly robust history of cartooning despite uh, problems against heavy odds. Um, people say that the index of democracy is, uh, one of the indices of democracy could be a country's cartoons. If you look at the country's cartoons, you would easily find out what kind of a uh, constitution it has, what kind of a democracy it has. So it's usually seen as an index of democracy, which means uh, uh, that is what gives the individual some happiness, freedom, ability to choose, dignity, and so on. So these cartoons that I'm going to show are, uh, I mean, you can never curate cartoons uh, for an evening, you know, 70, you know, 70, 80 years of cartooning done by people from Shankar down to the present generation. You can't uh, really meaningfully curate that kind of a a range of cartoons, but I'm just showing it because we've got to make a beginning at some point. Uh, this is a purely an overview of cartoons. Uh, we can't tarry on any individual cartoon because cartoons are contextual. We won't be able to explain it, but you will generally get a feel of how cartooning has changed, how cartoons have dwelt on issues, and cartoons have generally reflected politics. Uh, I will, it's not strictly chronological, broadly chronological, but there are also certain context, certain instances where I will briefly mention why I have put some cartoons together, say the emergency and so on. But you can ask any question that you feel like, either based on this or your own experience of watching cartoons. So can I start? And thank you all for coming, despite the rain. It's still raining, I think. So this is the concept that we discussed in the gallery, I think. How much of India can you discover through its cartoons? Naturally, uh, when we want freedom and try to get down to drafting a constitution, I think uh, the least amount of time was spent on, on freedom of the press or any such matter because everybody was convinced that this should be a free country. We didn't think of a guided democracy or we didn't think of a gradual or graded way of getting uh, citizenship for female stuff like that. We didn't do anything partially. The founding fathers of Indian constitution was fully convinced. I don't think they spent a second discussing uh, whether India should be free, India should have a free press. It was taken for granted as a badge of honor for them and an article of faith. Uh, only. Uh, they didn't make a separate provision for, uh, for uh, freedom of the press as in the US, the First Amendment. But I think our Article 19, 1A or whatever takes care of it fairly well. Uh, and some, some draconian provisions like uh, sedition. They were discussed in the Constitution but never adopted. So we started off with a lot of enthusiasm and nascent democracy started off with a lot of enthusiasm. We already had a tradition of political cartooning, which, which we inherited from the British, because that's been the system. You always inherit these things from your colonial masters. Since it's a basically a subversive medium, you use it to criticize them. I mean, we, we inherited cricket, English language, and cartooning from the British. We used all three against them. We won matches against them. We wrote against them. We cartooned against them. This is an early 1953 cartoon by Shankar. He's the first uh, professional cartoonist. Planning. There is again another, uh, another very interesting cartoon. Many people think that Shankar 
was too close to the Prime Minister. Nehru was a great patron, a lover of cartoons. So people think that he was very soft on, on the Prime Minister. You can make out that he was an absolutely strong ca cartoon against the Prime Minister drawn in 1950 because the general election was merely getting postponed. That, so Nehru was getting it done through an ordinance, not through a proper bill. He is criticizing it and he is showing the parliament itself as a rubber stamp. That's a strong comment. This is the old um, in the Kashmir issue, Sheikh Abdullah. The, the picture is no clearer than this even today. This is Kuti, who is a prime disciple of Shankar, trained by Shankar. This is the reaction to the Allahabad High Court judgment. Again, you can make out how Kutti's style was a little different from Shankar's. He could handle a number of characters in one frame. And he also covered the phase in Indian history, political history, where the power centers were slowly moving away from Delhi into the states. The Stathraks in the states, the chief ministers were becoming powerful. So you could find in many of his cartoons, either many, many, many leaders of the Congress, not just Nehru, or many chief ministers of the states. The power system is not just shown as earlier and rested in one person like Nehru. This is Rajinder Puri, probably one of the strongest editorial cartoonists the country has seen. Y.B. Chavan, Indira Gandhi. Y.B. Chavan is the Home Minister. Indira Gandhi brought out the worst in cartoonism. This is O.V. Vijayan. Totally graphic style. This is published by the Hindu. This is earlier the the symbol of the Jansak, of the land. Vijayan again. Like Putin, uh, Brezhnev's uh, capture of the Afghan capital, Kabul, in Soviet East India Company looking for an overland route. This cartoon is carried in the top of the page, front page of Statesman, and its editors wonder whether they should write an editorial after this. Vince Emerson told me that we were wondering whether to write an editorial letter. We can't write anything more than this cartoon. And of course, we'll go into emergency. You all know, internal emergency and censorship. This was probably one of the worst phases of uh, Indian democracy. It's a big, big problem for, for the media, naturally. And the cartoons, it was an even bigger problem. And it was the biggest problem for censors, because censors had no idea how to censor cartoons. So they, they did what they pleased. <laughs> because they always knew that this guy, if you don't find anything wrong with the cartoon, they would look harder to find something wrong, because this guy might have hidden something somewhere, and if I let it go, the PM one will find out. So they have, in fact, the softest of cartoonists like Lakshman got heavily censored, much more heavily censored than Abu, who was, was forthright. Because Abu, either you can reject it or not reject it, you were very clear what you had to say in the face. Because he did the pocket cartoon, very minimalist kind of style. Lakshman would draw layers and, you know, tapes tree and lots of things, animal images, and then they will wonder whether this represents somebody in power. <laughs> Censors had the toughest time, actually. The emergency. This is that iconic Abu cartoon. Interestingly, this cartoon was published in, you can make out in December 75. Emergency was declared in June 26, 1975. Within months, when the, when the state was at its fiercest, this cartoon was allowed by the censor. Yeah, it is a, it's a rare cartoon where the president has been brought in, which we don't normally do. 
It's an iconic cartoon, one of the most iconic cartoons in India. The fact that this cartoon was allowed by the, passed by the censor and was carried on the front page of the Indian Express all edition, four columns. One doesn't know how this was allowed. This is a typical Abu, this is a style of cartoon. Abu is a very unique cartoonist who, who had the widest reach in India. People don't realize it because he works for the Indian Express, multi-edition paper from Chandigarh to Cochin and uh, Nagpur to Nagaland. And he had these two talking heads, very simply drawn two congress figures in conversation. Uh, it was like a today's satellite TV of talking heads. These talking heads told you what was happening in Delhi with a punch. So somebody sitting in those days in, in Cochin or in Chandigarh, uh, they, they, they got the most critical comment on, on the government in Delhi through these cartoons. Appeared six days a week on the front page of the Express. It's called private view. This is Sudhir Dar at his desk. He's not usually a pungent cartoonist, but then when things went bad, he was really good. He's also one of the few Indian cartoonists who got published in the Mad Magazine, Sudhir. days of psychology, they are trying to read the palm, the Congress party symbol. This is one cartoon that summarized the, the personalized style of uh, governance which is usually associated with Indira Gandhi, completely personalized. She picked who should rule the state or this is a by somebody called Thackeray whom you would have heard of, Bal Thackeray. He was a cartoonist. <laughs> he was an admirer of Hitler and he despised Gandhi. Again, another cartoon by him on the Kerala's, at those days, the communist leader and chief minister at the time, E.M. Osman Budiripadi. They created a separate district, a new district in a, a Muslim dominated uh, region. So, this was seen as an appeasement of Muslims then by the right wing, which has all been proved wrong because that region developed into a fairly, I mean, socially and even educationally and all that in the last 20 years. And it produces the maximum number of girl students who come and join AIMS here. One of the major centers of, of uh, uh, you know, excellence, even in education. So, I think with the benefit of hindsight, you can say EMS was right and Thackeray was wrong. This is typical Mario. <laughs> Absolutely comic. The fatigue, news fatigue. This is again, this is an absolutely standalone style in Indian cartooning where whatever he drew was comic. Really comic chromosome. He just, just by drawing created comedy. This is one of the typical Coven cartoons. If you look closely, somewhere you'll find a lot of misdeeds. You'll find somebody trying to, one of the parish guys trying to light a cigar with a, with a candle. He's, he was very good at, <laughs> you know, this kind of a, a fish and cleats. Absolute celebration of Life. 
This is Manjula Padmanabhan, extremely creative, one of the most creative cartoons that we have had. She did magic with sequence to cartooning and reached almost, almost anticipated the graphic novel. She had ran a, uh, there was a Suki, a strip in the Sunday Observer, Vinod Mehta published it. One of the few women cartoonists we have had. She's a theatre person, she has scripted, written plays. But the kind of cartooning she did was absolutely out of the box. Keshav is Hindu. Now I'm going to, like the emergency, I'm going to talk about one little phase when Indian politics changed and how cartoons captured it, very briefly. Almost at the same time, the economy got liberalized by Narasimha Rao and somebody like Sheshan had more or less at the same time strengthened the election thing. They took a cartoon as a Keshav to put them together. One fellow hardly talked. Narasimha Rao was supposed to have known 14 languages and he could be silent in each one of them. <laughs> Sheshan could reel off any law, any, any, he was cabinet secretary, he was a very aggressive character, but he could, he could quote anything from scriptures to the constitution to strengthen the, very aggressively strengthen the uh, election commission. Before he came, we didn't know that the election commission could be so powerful. This is Surendra, another very interesting cartoon, very visual. Very socially sensitive political cartoon. So he is one, one, one theme that he constantly followed was women's uh, rights and representation in parliament. There are several of his cartoons on this issue. Again, Surendra. Vivishankar. Cerebral, mischievous, impish, devastating caricaturist. This is Another iconic cartoon which got reproduced probably hundreds, thousands of newspapers during a, a peculiar phase, I mean, in, in Indian journalism, of advocacy cartooning and advocacy journalism, which is not uncommon. But this is the only time in India where the cartoonist was used as a, as a, uh, as a major uh, part of the campaign. In fact, uh, the most important component of Arun Shaudhi's campaign on Bofors issue, corruption scam, important component of that was uh, Revi's cartoons. And their cartoons day after day on the front page debunking the Prime Minister, uh, which went, uh, I mean, absolutely ruined this image. Ajit Nair, probably the best magazine cartoonist we have ever had in India today. Use of technique, color, digitization. One cartoon. <laughs> this is special economic zone. Sudhir Thailand. Highly stylized caricature. He's from from a village in Rajasthan. Uh, you can see the some of this Rajasthani folk art. Absolutely stylized caricature. Took liberty, but he could get the resemblance very well. Also, uh, his village, I'm told, 
in every house there is a cartoonist. This is a Irfan Hussain who, who, who died, who was killed. I mean, he was found dead. Uh, one doesn't know why it happened, but he was a very talented, very gifted cartoonist. He was featured by many publications. He had a long run, fairly long run in the Outlook magazine. Very good cartoonist. Politically very, very, very absolutely sharp and very good with drawing. Hussain, my friend. This is another uh, woman cartoonist, another rare Maya Kamath who used to draw regularly for Asian age. We are getting closer to our time. Manjul. Manjul got into major trouble with the government for drawing cartoons. He has been attacking the Prime Minister models as regularly as Rajin Puri used to attack Indira Gandhi. And the place is again very visual. He used the word GDP and popularity and all that. Also, this is the digital age of cartooning. You know, this uh, really Indian cartooning has really come of age. These cartoons, some of the cartoons that I'll show now are, are, are big presences in the uh, social media and on the web. They are primarily the primary presence is the web. And also, they use the uh, digital devices. The art has changed completely. The craft has changed. Manjul, people like Manjul. They commute and they're in Bombay. When they commute, there, there's a news break. From the train, he can read out the cartoon and send it. That kind of a thing. I mean, it's a really interesting way of cartooning. Addu, are you? Trans in India. Very pungent cartoon. Fifty-seven inch. <laughs> A ruthless cartoonist. Satish Acharya, another very big presence in the in the social media and on the web. <laughs> he lives in another interesting this Satish lives in Kundapur, small town in, in Karnataka. Uh, for some personal reason, he doesn't live in a big city, but he's very active because this is thanks to technology, web. Um, Prasad. Now with the economic times. Prasad again. You would all know her. Delhi knows Kiran Bedi. This is another very, very interesting cartoonist whose work is entirely digital. Rajit Kumar, he draws for Deccan Herald. He used to draw for Hindustan Times. He was an illustrator and a cartoonist for Hindustan Times. He draws for Deccan Herald now. See, look at the use of a photographic image and drawing. Very, very interesting. Everybody is there on it. Target. No. I think I'm done. Now the point that uh, we would probably be discussing is we have seen the emergency, we have seen elections seem getting 
content, elections, governments changing. India is generally seen as an active electoral democracy. But what happens to our democracy between elections? This is where the cartoons are. We have a problem between elections, as everybody else has a problem. So I will now ask the questions. Or can we start a discussion? If anybody wants to go back to any of these images, I can. We can take questions if anybody wants to throw some. Um, if not, uh, then can we go ahead with the next segment? Uh, I'd like to invite Sandeep uh, Lewis, um, our in-house researcher for KNMA, to join Mr. Tony for a very brief conversation but I think people should interrupt with questions. Like people yes, don't have questions. I mean, it's, oh yes. This is basically to trigger, a, this is designed to trigger a yes. discussion. Yes. So to me, uh, the, the later cartoons that you showed, they are more trenchant than, say, you know, the earlier, in a, in a different way, you know? Yeah, yeah, very uh, interesting, yeah. So, so. You're talking about this because, yeah. yeah so what accounts for that? Can you tell us? No, it could be because we are maturing as a, as a democracy in, in our own, you know, uh, ways uh, with all our problems. Uh, we are being more forthright. Also, the point is the public impression of the people who govern us earlier, like uh, somebody like Nehru, one could nev never think of him as a villain. Mm -hmm. One could think of all those leaders, according to me, till the emergency, to go by the cartoons that I have seen. Uh, we have generally been had access to. Most of our leaders, of almost all our leaders till the emergency were seen as gentlemen who made mistakes. Mm -hmm. Because they were elected leaders. And uh, they, most of them were elected very convincingly. Uh, and they were seen as leaders, probably a little bit of corruption here or there by the 60s and 70s. Uh, some influence, some peddling, uh, I mean, both captain. But they by and large seen as leaders with, uh, with who made mistakes. They were genuine leaders who made mistakes. And that's the spirit in which the entire media criticized them and the cartoon is true. By and large. Earlier. Earlier. I'm talking about till the, this, my, the point, the, the tipping point according to me is the emergency. After that, no cartoonist has trusted any leader. I mean, if you're in the business of cartoon, you never trusted a leader. Anyone in power was seen as guilty till he was proved innocent. Complete thing turned upside down. Because of the kind of things that happened in the emergency, we were, I, I didn't cartoon during the emergency, but I was a student. And then many of you would have read about the emergency. People who cartoon through the emergency, they, it was hell. I mean, and, and it was supposed to be a democracy. Why, why did anybody do any of those things? We have no answer to. Most of the practices that we still see today in, in UP and all that, the demolitions, the bulldozers and so on, all of that started in, uh, during the emergency, right in the, in the national capital. I mean, no. I, I'm not saying, but that, is, that was for somebody who followed news at that time, that was a tipping point. And that was also a big shock for many, many, many people who were already 20, 30 years into the profession. But somebody like me who was in college, it was not a shock. Because we had grown up looking at the editorial cartoons of Abu, Vijayan and Rajinder Puri. Vijayan and Rajinder Puri almost anticipated the emergency. Vijayan even wrote a book, a chapter in a political novel he was writing. Then. Two years before the emergency, it was entitled emergency, one of the chapters. The point is, but, but cartoons were already there. For them, it must have been a huge shock that they would have had to submit their cartoon to a censor in Nehru's, Indira Gandhi's India. So that was the point. And the, the, after that, I don't think any practicing cartoonist would have trusted anybody in power. Now, nobody, no general, serious journalist would trust anybody in power. Uni. Yeah. I mean, on the other emergency, there were a lot of cartoons. But generally in the media, the experience is that, that the 19 months of emergency was, Mrs. Gandhi openly declared emergency, there was open censorship. But what we've been going through in the last few years has been a kind of an undeclared emergency. And the media has been forced to, uh, I mean, either they're out of opportunism or out of coercion, you know. Yeah. But has that affected, because 
generally, barring one or two newspapers, you can see that the kind of trenchant criticism that is required of today, like you mentioned the bulldozers or n number of things happening, there are very few places, barring, say, Express and your cartoons, which is happening. You're right. Yeah. So do you think that cartoon, uh, is that even cartoonists are either being self I mean, sense being censored or self self censorship. How much is it affecting the climate we are going through as we speak? I mean, you know, in this last few years. Yeah, but the point is that when you compare it to emergency, there is a problem because when during the emergency, nobody knew it was going to come to an end. Mm -hmm. And for a cartoon, the unit is the day. Mm -hmm. Every day you have to produce a cartoon. And if somebody is going to mess around with you, it is a daily suffering. So it is bad. I mean, you cannot say that this is better than that or that is better than this because in hindsight, you can say anything you want. The point is, today, the, the, then the issue was everybody knew government was making a mistake. Editors knew that this should not be done. No editor would have approved of them. Uh, uh, and they might have written editorial, but no editor in those days, no major editor would have approved of censoring cartoons. Somebody like Shankar wound up uh, the Shankar sweetly. He didn't say it was an emergency. He said, I can't carry on at this age on full screen. He was being polite about it because it is his friend's daughter who is uh, running the country. But it's amply clear why he closed down Shankar sweetly. The issue is today it's a completely different thing that's happening. It is undeclared emergency. It's also worse than being undeclared. It is, it is, it is what do I say? What is decentralized emergency. The bully is almost at your doorstep. You would think that some place like Kerala uh, is safe for a cartoon. It's no longer because a panchayat ward member can harm you today. Indira Gandhi wouldn't have come and attacked the cartoonist. This, this is the situation today. I'm not just saying cartoonist. Anybody who wrote a sensitive report. Everybody is today. The point today is very different. It's very different from... So whether it was a declared emergency or not, the right down to your doorstep, there is bullying. It's a very different situation. So how, how do you handle it? I mean, how do you... In, in emergency, as you said, could have been institutionally handled, you know? A newspaper could have, like, the and all Narasimhan. Uh, Narasimhan allowed any Abu cartoon. Abu, in fact, uh, dedicates that uh, book collection of his called The Games of Emergency to Narasimhan. Say, even barring Vika Narasimhan, most of his cartoons wouldn't have got printed because he would have anticipated the censor and killed the cartoon. Not only the censor, if it gets printed, the cartoon would hurt uh, the government. Otherwise, there's no cartoon. Yeah. Abu is not a comic cartoon. Abu is, not a, Abu is a serious political cartoon. You're going to print the guy on Indian politics. He's going to, going to offend somebody or other. We can have him and did it. So despite the filtering by the censor, the cartoons are killed. So that situation is, uh, uh, that there's an institution that stands with the, with the cartoonist today. Now most cartoonists don't have work because a paper like the Hindustan Times, uh, which, which where Shankar became an icon and a star, the paper, Gandhi's famous quote, did Hindustan Times make you or did you make Hindustan Times? That's what he asked Shankar. And that kind of an institution does not have a political cartoon in the last 10 or 15 years. They have not had any serious political cartoon. In fact, most newspapers don't have it. So no, but oh, no, I mean no, I'm saying the point is that the institution, see, the only institution support a cartoon gets in India is the media support. You get a job in a newspaper. You get regularly featured. That is no longer there. The new... Uh, the new uh, opportunity for a cartoonist is the web. That's where you see some trenchant cartoons. You and find Satish Rajoji, Manjul, and all. They have all completely migrated to the uh, to the web. Have they managed to? They have found a business plan. There, are, there are business plans. They, yeah, there are there are business plans. Another thing is this: this there is also a problem there. There, if they get they like Manjul got into trouble. If I get into trouble, my editors will be with me because I work for a newspaper or a web property which, which is edited. There's an editorial interface. These guys, when you upload a cartoon on your own, you're freely doing it, but then you will have to answer for it when there's a case. It's very, very difficult to fight court cases. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for this uh, a beautiful uh, visual uh, journey. 
it was really uh, enriching for me. So uh, my question to you is, uh, I want you to talk about the subaltern representation in the cartoons. Uh, subaltern. Subaltern, or, or I can say margin pe marginal people mm -hmm. rep representation in the uh, cartoons. Like I have seen, and humor is the most important tool to subvert as a, uh, as a like tool of protest. Mm -hmm. So I would like you to comment on the subaltern representations in the cartoons. That's a very broad uh, topic that is uh, there. But the point is mostly it is done through either one character like uh, Lakshman with the common name. How strictly subaltern that is is open to question. But the common man did represent uh, uh, the urban India at its basic uh, uh, Bombay. And then how much of uh, India became urbanized. To that ex extent, Lakshman's cartoons became popular. So there was an urban uh, emerging India where you talk about this kind of issue through the common man who was near mere refuse. He didn't have a voice. His wife spoke. This is probably the consistent uh, subaltern kind of a response to the goings on in India. Most of Indian cartooning has happened in Delhi because most of our early politics was Delhi oriented. So the, the problem was when you have something like that uh, happening, uh, you concentrate on decision making and people will take decisions. These are all big personal things, the ministerial things. So the real focus of the cartoonist has not been the common man. And we have not developed comic strip, strip cartoons, or even uh, underground comics and stuff like that. All of that is emerging in India. Then you will see more and more of this. But recently, when the uh, COVID struck, when the COVID struck, uh, when people had to just leave quickly. And they found hundreds of thousands of people walking away from Indian cities into the uh, villages. Major political cartoons started commenting on it. We can actually curate just a show with those cartoons. That has been the most, the strongest uh, subaltern uh, response I have seen in cartoons in India. Since this is a very general thing, I couldn't pick. Yeah, it just, I have yeah. myself done cartoon. Many of them, all cartoons have come into India. Are we exceeding time or anything? No, no, no. I have not checked. I must no, check. Now, what, yeah, what we have had is a book on this issue by Sham Sundar called No Laughing Matter. That is on how Ambedkar has been represented in Indian cartoons. It's a very, very important book and an absolutely brilliant work. Research work by Sham Sundar, who was a cartoonist and a cartoon scholar. He was in JNU. Can, can you repeat the name? The name is No Laughing Matter. No Laughing Matter. Uh, on Ambedkar cartoons. There he brings out uh, how, how even <coughs> Shankar or all the veterans, how they they didn't represent Ambedkar uh, fairly. There was unfair representation of Ambedkar. Uh, he, only one cartoonist uh, 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 doesn't get blamed on this count, is Lakshman. Well, I was interested in seeing how uh, s somebody mentioned subaltern, how, uh, how they're represented in cartoon. I would be interested in seeing how subalterns see politics, you know, through what prism do they look through. In that sense, you know, uh, that's where this question came. Are there no, we, as we go more and more into strip yeah. cartoon, you know, you can, you can do strip cartoon. Like Bangladesh, there's a strip where the, the character, the main character is a slum boy. Mm. That kind of cartoon we have not seen yet. Uh, that will happen. It will, it will, there were, uh, somebody, you, you have to editorially support it. For now that the web is free, people who are creative will do it. And there's a lot of, fair amount of graphic novel writing is happening in India. Interestingly, graphic novel, when it was free, you be, even the first generation of graphic novels were more women writers. Whereas you, can't, you can hardly find a woman cartoonist. And this is the thing. So when, when the situation becomes freer and easy to access, But that comic strip that you're saying, like I'm thinking of, say, Calvin and Hobbes mm -hmm. or Peanuts, mm -hmm. you know, Schulz and all that, 
on social commentary yeah, i mean indian cartoons seem to be focused more on I told you that was the reason because yeah. we are supported by the by the newspaper. Oh, okay, and the newspaper don't give space for that. They, this happens in the in the languages. Kerala, we had a tradition of uh, every periodical, which is the magazine format. Every one of them, in the last days, had a full page social cartoon. You can't call it a strip because it was not a strip. It was a full page sequential piece, work like a strip with common cast of characters and so on, like any peanuts or anything. And uh, that's where Aravindan did something innovative which is almost a graphic novel. It has been there in languages. Languages probably it's also natural. Marathi has it. Tamil has it. Um, Tamil uh, publication called Anand Vijayan. Used to have a brilliant cartoonist uh, who did this. Uh, several brilliant cartoons, not one. Their cover would be a social cartoon. It has been there. But I think uh, it's easier to, to create social humor in your own first language than in English, probably. Can, can I ask one more question? Uh, sir, you talked about the digitalization of cartoons. Mm. So now we have another trend. It's yeah. like memes. Okay. They are also political, and they are equally like somehow I can compare cartoons with the power of memes. So would you like to say something about it? Because no, it's good because it's, you see, as long as you, you enrich our irreverent, there is a great deficit of irreverence in this country. There's too much of pomposity. So, I mean, memes create irreverence. I mean, it's more than Elliot, if you ask me. People think that they're competing with the cartoon. There's no competition because you take a lot of space to create more irreverence. Yeah. Censor Fraud. Fraud censorship, censorship is less in memes more in cartoons because they are like... No, there's no censorship in cartoons. Don't okay. uh, we have to use those words very carefully. There is no, I wish there was censorship. Then we could have talked about censorship. As Manvi said, this is completely amorphous. Okay. The control is amorphous. We don't know who is controlling you, what is with you. Nobody owns the painting. Prime Minister will say the cartoon is a great tradition. And the local cop will come and throw you in jail. Some IAS officer, a district elder, I spoke to that fellow, a district elder of a southern state like Tamil Nadu, Puttanapur. That fellow proceeds against a cartoon for a two-year-old allegation on sedition. How does a trained IAS officer, direct recruit, trained in Masuri, he gets a fair amount of classes on constitutional law before he comes out as an IAS officer, as an RD or a SDM. He's a collector. He coolly signs a paper, how can a piece of paper on which whatever you draw, how can that be seditious in a country with a professional army, fairly, I mean, it's well policed. This guy signs it. I asked him, why did you sign this? I mean, you could have put him on some jail for other things. You could have said defamatory. But how do you charge a cartoonist with sedition? This is what I'm saying. I mean, anybody can do anything here. That's the problem today. There is a great deal of polarization in society, and many increasingly people tend to read something or watch something that reaffirms their worldview, mm -hmm. you know? And con they also tend to reject things that they feel is very opposite to what they believe. So how does that affect the cartoonist, in, um, especially in a d d digital age, which you say is really giving them uh, it's a, it's a very good question because it's a, it's a big problem because if, uh, if you think a cartoonist is opposing the system, your own readers uh, who like you expect you to behave in a predictable manner, attacking the obvious target day after day. But is that the only thing the cartoonist should be doing is a question that I often ask myself because you have to open other spaces uh, in India Anybody who is political would understand that we have to get a little persuasive in India, in politics. We have to win over people, because losing people to, to the other side. If a cartoonist has to join in this exercise, I think cartooning has to become, a, become refined. And at the best of times, our cartoonists have done that, actually. Even the situation was so bad, wasn't so bad. 
as we look at an old Abu or a Vijayan party, uh, they were sophisticated. They didn't attack Indira Gandhi just for the heck of attacking Indira Gandhi. They, 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 had, they, they tried to focus on issues, themes they had never had. Uh, they, they, they gave you a sense of being in conversation with the cartoon and they are doing the same plot almost. For example, if you are hearing uh, right top corner of sensitivity, they are absolutely the same person. He will be there, right top corner of sensitivity. The first 10, 15 minutes, then it sort of goes in the middle and you are still there on the same day. So why is the plot that is done is to create the serial encounter of the cartoon. So you hear a voice and then you, you, you are in conversation. Some days you won't like it. You wonder what is this guy saying? And you, you sort of, you create them for like an organic conversation. That is the impact the cartoons have created. And uh, that, I think we should recapture that moment in time. Okay. Instead of, you know, stop, doing a stop cartoon. Very easy to do for a few cartoons. If you ask me to attack X, Y, or Z day after day, I can easily do it. Only give me the paper as a sign day. <laughs> Tony, uh, one uh, small thing. Uh, uh, you told me in the past that how cartoonists use facial features of, of politicians to exaggerate, you know, depict certain Indira Gandhi's nose and Nehru's uh, Narasimha Rao's pout. And they also lend, as the politician evolves uh, in power, becomes more authoritarian, then they, they also make that person look harsher. You know, they, they be become more, you know, uh, which is also part of the subversive. Uh, I've not seen, uh, uh, even showing very many car cartoons on how Modi's face uh, has been depicted over the last. Well, you uh, showed me one. Did you remember? I know, I know. I, I know, but. And you can see, it, you can see, you can see uh, Modi's face is not there. This is, Modi's there here and there, and there, there. Uh, uh, GDP Manju. No, no, I, I, I was wondering whether. Uh, no, but there, there's a problem there. How different cartoonists look at that's history. a very, very, very. I wonder why the history is cartoon. What do you do with the face? What David Lowe did with Hitler, uh, the, the harshest form, and nobody anticipated it was a clue. I mean, not even a writing journal. The first person in free speech who said that this guy is big, is going to be a big trouble for the whole world for anything like human decency was Lowe. He played a hidden crisis. We anticipated it was 1920s, not in the 30s. So he would draw Hitler, continued to draw Hitler in a comic manner, which angered Hitler, because Hitler is an artist, trained artist, so he knew the power of the visual. He was trained, Austrian trained artist, so he knew when he was very good to look at his work, he had a good eye. And he knew how powerful this medium was more than most counterparts, you know, political counterparts. He knew the power of the art. But this guy would draw him as uh, as comic, getting more and more comic. So the point is, there were people who criticized. Hitler went mad. Hitler first tried to accuse him, saying, you know, it's some kind of over the top, you know, he was saying stuff, uh, loading his enemies. Then the later, uh, Gestapo, uh, the, the German Gestapo had officially, I think uh, Lowe was there in the first one night. They got him to went in first one night, and in the first one, people could be shocked that he was there. Shocking. <laughs> so <laughs> you couldn't take it at all because he, he, if you read, if this guy had drawn him as a monster, Hitler would have loved it because he was ruling with fear. Yeah. See, the point is, what, how do these people react? It's a bit complex. It's not, uh, it's not just one way. So the, this, this guy would never give him that uh, that evil status. He would make him look like a clown. That really was amazing. I don't know about how he did it. <laughs> what it is he could do, I don't know. But the point is, there were people who criticized Lowe for this, saying that this man has done a lot of evil. Uh, how can he just uh, show him as a clown? I mean, you've got to lose one. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I have a question here, please. Hi. Uh, 
Um, I want to actually go back to your answer regarding social commentary, that cartoons being uh, reflecting or being a part of social commentary. And I understand and I hear you when you're saying that newspapers would not be very uh, keen on publishing something that talks about the subaltern representation in politics or their, their views of politics or their influence on politics. But my question is, can you please explain then what is the difference, for example, being a cartoonist and in, and you know, you do see such commentaries like right-wing populism being talked about in, news, in magazines like The Economist or The Guardian or the political EU. Uh, and they do talk about right-wing populism a lot. Um, so what would really then be the market, like the dynamics and the difference in them being able to publish it and us not? But for example, Times of India does talk about right-wing populism in France, but it doesn't do it when it's talking about the one in India. So what is the issue? What is precisely the issue? Unless there is, uh, see, cartooning is not a standalone art. I can't introduce a subject and comment on it. No cartoonist can. You can only comment on a subject when it is in, in the air. Somebody has to do the, the job of you know, either articulating it or breaking news or reporting well or writing about it, creating already a, some kind of a conversation or a buzz. Only then the cartoon comes in. It's a very small canvas media. Unless you're doing, I mean, you're allowed to do, I mean, a brief. It can be, it's, it's conceivable that the cartoonist is allowed to give a brief to, to go report something for, like, um, Cover it, and even fictionalize it through cartoons, individual cartoons. That one the police cut. That kind of graphic journalism, or uh, uh, that is still new to India. Uh, it can happen. It can happen. But what what I didn't say that uh, there is a problem with with uh, editors not wanting to do it in, in English or in, in large papers. The problem is it is easier for more natural for a for a language paper to do this. They, they, they probably they have a different sense of their, their readership. You know, it's maybe more real D. You probably have a more concrete view of your readership. Uh, but I mean, if you're selling to on, on a sub subcontinental scale, if you're if you're talking about readership, that's what uh, Times of India or Indian Express or the Hindu would talk about, especially with the web. You don't know, you don't, you can't even classify your readers very clearly. But if I'm talking about Malayalam readers or Tamil readers. I will know the social sensibility is slightly bit more. And also cultural symbols are constantly used when you're doing uh, social cartoons, which is very difficult to find pan, pan Indian cultural images. Right. These are the issues, but all these will be creatively overcome. Uh, sir, I have one question regarding, uh, so you were commenting about how, uh, so you were commenting about how uh, Today, uh, in newspapers, you don't find uh, say people working permanently uh, as political cartoonists, right? And there are people on the web who are basically trying to do it. Uh, so I'm trying to understand how uh, this works from the financial perspective, because one of the effective ways of uh, silencing anyone is basi basically uh, removing the financial support that, say, anyone has if they want to raise their voice, right? Because we do talk about, say, actions being taken in states by bulldozers, but you, what you will not hear being talked about is how the financial incentives are removed for any such voice to be brought up. And if they are, then there are basically cases of defamation or basically some other legal cases being put against, uh, say, the left-wing media or, or the liberal media, which is basically trying to raise a voice against what is currently popular. Thank you. Yeah, but that's true. But uh, wh what is your question? I mean, are you asking how this, this is, things have come to a pass? True, and that's why that's why I said many many big newspapers no longer have a cartoonist. Yeah. Uh, so you said that there are some people who are working on the web and they have yeah. found a financial yeah. model. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I is it really working out or is it? It's just working out. It's working out. It's beginning to work out. Yeah, it is working out. You can even have a contract with the same newspapers. So they would they would have you. Uh, not on the staff, but as a, uh, they would uh, sign a contract with you for, for, for their online edition. 
uh, or even if they have print, they will do it. But you are not part of the editorial board in the sense in which my kind of cartoonists, you know, who were primarily print cartoonists, we all become part of the newsroom, so to speak. We, we have, I mean, some, sometimes we used to, uh, when we are around, we sit at edit meetings or even news meetings. So syndication is very good on this. I mean, in fact, this is Rajinder Gori. Yeah, the, no, the point is you can you can give, uh, filter it in many ways, you see. You can give somebody the first look. Uh, and then if somebody wants to have a second, third look, the paywall, you can adjust the paywall. There are many ways of doing it. But it is actually Rajinder Puri thought of syndication through the web for the first time. Uh, no, he syndicated long back, physically. Uh, that was done through a news agency in Kanma, uh, Gold Market. It was done very well. I have syndicated uh, for two years, quite successfully. Uh, but there was only print. But my, my question was then it became impossible because uh, single edition newspapers started disappearing. In our case, uh, we needed to, to have single edition or two edition newspapers where your readership didn't clash. Everybody wanted it as an exclusive. So you always ended up with the third paper, fourth paper, minor paper, that kind of a thing. And that was a problem, but that uh, today all of that is irrelevant. I think you can syndicate through the web. You can have your own platform. Somebody visits you, you get paid. My question is, uh, you say that it's very difficult to censor cartoons since there, there could be many layers and a lot of people can't really pinpoint or say, okay, what is it that we need to hide? You know, it has many layers and many meanings. So are there any, because you've not included any of your own illustrations, your own cartoons, do you have any examples of such something that you're proud of that you've done and got away with something and wanted to convey something is there no, something? I never worked uh, when there was censorship. Okay. I came into cartooning after the emergency. All right. So I have not had any experience of official censorship. So there's nothing this <laughs> that you got away with. No, you get away with sometimes through with with an editor sometimes. You know, All right. you know editor, but that is not uh, adversarial. Sometimes you push. You know, cartoonists keep pushing the envelope, and 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 I had a conservative editor, Kasturi. G. Kasturi was a Hindu, who was considered generally conservative, but he was a great lover of cartoons. Point is, he would have loved the cartoon even if he were a doctor or a, or a, or a bank clerk, you know. It had nothing to do with being an editor. So that was good, and he, he had already had uh, published, he had published uh, Rajinder Puri and Vijayan. I succeeded Vijayan, so I had a great advantage. Uh, the point is, once in a while you pushed, and uh, on, on the same person. For, for instance, those days the norm was if you do an Indira Gandhi cartoon, the next day you do an Indira Gandhi cartoon, third day you don't. You don't, I mean, successively yeah. attack. You know. I have seen Vijayan and all writing on the margin of the cartoon, sorry for sending a third Indira cartoon. <laughs> the point is, I mean, you, you normally don't do it, you don't get obsessed with this. Yeah. But that kind of a thing I have got away with. And because, not if I had done an ordinary cartoon, Kasturi would have said, you can think about it next week. It won't go away. But are there I any cartoons that you've documented over the years? No, I have not. I have not done any research on no? myself. No? <laughs> just just a glimpse of what you've done or I something that you know? These are completely contested. I don't yeah. remember half the cartoons I did last week. All right. This is a I mean, passing show. Every day. Uh, also, as we are talking about this digitization and all, uh, so, as I can imagine, like someone who would have become a cartoonist in 1970s, for example, he would have read uh, like uh, the comics like Cha Cha Cha, Billu, and all, and that style in the cartoon that we see that resembles somewhat that. But nowadays, the youth is actually reading anime. Yeah. So, <laughs> do you see like some sort of influence of that form on our cartoons? This is not uh, that style. This is Adwariu. Adwariu is not that. There's a clear clear deviation from the style that you mentioned. This is very new. But it doesn't mean that you have to follow anime. Anime and uh, uh, manga and all that. Those are all signature styles. That Indian cartoon and Indian cartoonist follows that. Because, see, basically what does a cartoonist do? I have to deal with Indian faces. Which means from Assam to uh, Arunachal to Andhra Pradesh, uh, Nagaland to... Jaipur and so on. A huge subcontinental ethnic variety of faces. This is the first thing that a cartoonist has to handle, caricature. So I, you have to develop a style that is very malleable. Uh, you can't develop a very rigid kind of manga kind of style and if you want to capture faces. 
There are, if, if you're going to do comics, you can do it. So there are problems there, but this guy is an absolutely original style. Yeah. You look at all the eyes are complete black holes. Yeah. It's a very stark uh, image he, he can create. And the, the, the styles are there, they're very good uh, styles. Okay. This is a deliberate use of, a, of a, almost a neutral comic style to create a devastating comment. <laughs> the cartoon looks very innocuous. I mean, there are styles. There are, I think our cartoon is quite sophisticated. Yeah. Then look at this. This is completely graphic. This can be printed anywhere in the world. This is not a continuation of uh, even the idiom is different. This, this one. Graphically, we are fine. Yeah, uh, just one uh, one more question or query. So, can you name some cartoonists? Like usually, cartoons are anti-oppressor. So, I, in the last few days, I have seen few cartoonists who are actually working pro-government. Pro-government cartoons won't work. But they are working. Like they have lots and lots of followers, and like they've been into the trend these days. Like people have been hired. Those cartoonists are being hired to do their do the job in the other way. So, oh, no. oh, okay, fine. Tell yeah. me, tell me. Yeah. So, uh, I would like to ask you whether you know some of the cartoonists who has done so in the time of emergency or like in the later period of maybe even now. Because I've recently seen uh, seen some cartoons on Gandhi being printed with all the blood uh, kind of footprints and saying that Gandhi was like that and that, like that. No, that has been done earlier also, but that's against the Gandhi, against Gandhi. That cartoon is against Gandhi ji. You talk about Gandhi ji, you know, Gandhi, Gandhi. Yeah, yeah, Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi. No, no, Gandhi. I'm Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah. But such cartoons have been done earlier. RSS had come out with RSS magazines that come out with a cartoon showing Gandhi as a Ravana, with the entire first generation leaders of India, uh, Nehru, Patel, Patel. Yeah. Nehru, Sardar Patel, um, Subhash Chandra Bose. Uh, Maulana Asad, naturally, because he's not a Hindu. All kinds of faces. Ten faces including his, as a Ravana. I mean, embodiment of evil. Those kind of cartoons have been published, but those cartoons, are, that also represents a certain politics which you and I may not agree with. The point is a cartoon is adversarial. It has to criticize somebody. It's not a promotional medium. Yeah, that's what my yeah. question is. It are they, they, can they be like some media, kind but of... It can be used strategically like this. I mean, everybody in that sense, you can't, you can't blame it. If Arun Shavari ran a campaign in his waffles, uh, for, for strong, good reasons, editorial reasons, they use cartoons against uh, the man in power. But usually, if you attack a person in power, that is where the real worth of the cartoon comes out. My, my question is coming, you said that Hitler was very much aware of the power of the visuals. So when a government is using cartoons for he, some he kind of propaganda... Yeah, it has had serious consequences. That's a very good question when you mention what he did within Germany. David Law was in, was in England. David Law was able to attack Hitler in England, not just because he was outside. The British government was also against attacking Hitler too much because they had trade relations with Hitler. For a long time, somebody like Neville Chamberlain thought that he could persuade Hitler. He was again an errant guy, but not you, that kind of a thing. We don't want to go into it in detail. The point is Hitler used German cartoonists at the height of his dictatorship rule to or attack Jews. He had a target. See, cartoons can be used very badly because cartoon can be a very fast start. Yeah. Because it's it's one sided. It's a, it's a, it can be it's completely one sided. So Hitler employed German cartoons against Jews, and German cartoons used every symbol associated with Judaism, the Star of David, or whatever, for a long time. That's why now. The backlash is, we all face the backlash, including modernist people who operate in the US or Europe. The cartoonists who, if you criticize Israel in some way and bring in a, a, a Jewish symbol, there's a huge backlash. Because you have completely vilified a religion so much through cartoons that people get really touchy about it. If you do the same thing to Islam or any other, any other religion, so we'll also come to a stage where you'll find these people overreacting, quote unquote, to the cartoon later. So that middle ground, that liberal space that is required for sustainable cartooning, that will vanish. 
if you use this too much. So not a question, but I just wanted to hear your observation on that Amul Girl series. Uh, week after week, they cover some socially relevant issue. And the interesting part is they work in the very tight boundary. Cheese, dood, makhan, and we, they, they work in that boundary, but it's very, very powerful. So what is your observation? Because it's I running for a very it, long time. I see time. it as what she said, you know, as the kind of uh, comic cartoon that we do not have. It is a, it's a good substitute for a, uh, for a it's almost like a comic. Uh, uh, it works like a comic. It's got fixed characters. It uses wordplay. Uh, of course, it's it's uh, very well drawn. And it, I think it works like a comic, where you identify the characters and the visual tweaks and this and that. It's very good. Comics are like that. Comics have a, a certain environment. You know, as you said, limited environment. They want a limited environment. peanuts. Peanuts. Uh, even the size is smaller than the regular strip. And uh, those characters have a certain kind of gentleness. Even the emotional range is restricted completely. Uh, Schultz said that he wouldn't even put those kids on a high uh, parapet. Only a low parapet because he didn't want the kids to fall and hurt themselves. This is how they work. I mean, this is a very gentle. This is like that. I mean, this is very good. You're right. It is a limited environment. You can create huge. Great fun. Also mischievous. We can comments on contemporary events. Also, it works very well on the holding, the size. It sizes up very well, sizes down very well. You can size it up and it works like a holding. It works on a newspaper in a two, three column space. It's very good. Excellent. But there's no government there. There's no government and all that there. Why should every cartoon be anti -government? Where is the government in that cartoon? I mean, it is, it is tracing life in another way. It is looking at life in another way. During the emergency, they have, they have uh, pro uh, civilization and campaign cartoon. I have not seen it. If they have done that's not a cartoon then. That becomes a DAVP ad kind of a thing. Cartoon cannot be promotional. Cartoon, you can't, I mean, if somebody is trying to do it, I mean, it will be ridiculous. It won't work. Like the censor, he will try and you the reader will try and find something. You think that the guy is sarcastic. Cartoon won't work as a promotion. I have I, I do you think that it is I've never seen a pro emergency. I'll tell you what. For a while, I think that's a slightly humorous kind of punch. Yeah, that's all possible. That's all possible. But the point I'm making is, you see, the, the, you have to judge. It, it is not a political cartoon. Yeah, it's, it's not meant to be a political cartoon. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a no, it is an, it is promoting a brand. It's promoting a brand. It's a, you can do that. I mean, markets. What is wrong in it? All the uh, parallel life that you've shown through your cartoons throughout the years. Do you see this turning into some animation for the future for the people to see what India was and has been through over the years? Do you think this can be used as a base for an animated film, maybe? You talk about uh, any collection of cartoons. Any collection of cartoons. Yeah, that is true. Cartoons are used uh, uh, in advanced democracies, even not even in advanced democracies in countries like Singapore, yeah. to teach history. Yeah. We tried it for the political science class 11 students. Yeah. In CERT textbook had hundreds of cartoons. Some of those cartoons were... Because they're published. published. They're there. Publi archival published cartoons were used to talk about history. It was very useful in history classes. Yeah. The world over. They're already being used. You can easily use this, uh, uh, these images to tell a story about India. Yeah. I mean, if you run this, you can also refine it and tell several stories about But we'll need your documentation on then. You need documentation. You need indexing, proper yeah. indexing. We don't yeah. have. We don't yeah. have any dedicated cartoon galleries in India. Yeah. Yep, uh, sir. So, uh, so we have talked about, uh, say, censorship or self-censorship when it comes to cartooning. 
uh, have there been topics which are considered taboo uh, when it comes to cartooning or have there been topics which uh, most cartoonists have tried avoiding in india uh, so i'm talking in the context that say when uh, say in, uh, in europe when uh, when cartoonists have tried to create some cartoons on say prophet muhammad right uh, that has backlash against them has have there been similar instances in india no, there have been cases against cartoonists have not been killed for that in charlie hebdo cartoonist was killed a polish very senior cartoonist was killed point is um, uh, there have been cases against cartoonists again filed in all kinds of courts there was a case against uh, keshav for a cartoon where he is supposed to have visually represented the prophet uh, that was filed in some Srinagar court to some place where it was not even easy to go and fight a case. Such things have happened. Uh, but uh, what do you do? I mean, in any, any society, including the West, there are taboos. There are certain topics that a cartoonist wouldn't uh, uh, touch. I, for instance, I, I am not a believer myself, so I don't get into religion at all. I don't, I have no business talking about religion. Any religion, mine or anyone else's. I stay away from it. There are ways of talking about uh, politics or religion. You don't, uh, you don't get into it. Uh, yeah, so just to stress on it again. Uh, so uh, I'm coming at it from an angle where, say, uh, I look at the institution of the court as something in which a lot of uh, Indians have faith in, and it time upon time keeps failing, right? But I cannot remember a lot of cartoons where uh, cartoonists have actually questioned the court. I mean, people do question it. But I cannot recollect, but there have been very strong comments about it. Questioning the court is another thing altogether. That has happened. See, during the emergency, we couldn't. But one of the judgments of the emergency, one of the cases where there's a Justice Chandrachud, Justice Bhagavati's judgment saying that in an emergency, the citizen has no right to life. That has been questioned in cartoons, even then. Cartoonists have questioned it. Cartoonists have questioned it in their own way. You are talking about visual representation which hurts religion. That is a different topic. And again, courts have now come to our help. The little help that Indian cartooning has got is uh, from a judgment uh, uh, from a Madras High Court. Uh, Justice G.R. Swaminathan, he had an absolutely epochal judgment which said that a cartoonist has not just the right to mock, cartoonist has the right to offend, right to ridicule. It's a, it's a judgment that goes seriously into cartooning history and also the context in which that uh, judgment was, uh, that case was handled. And he says that unequivocally the cartoonist has the right to ridicule. And if you have to use the provisions of defamation against the cartoonist, you have to apply the highest threshold. You can't proceed against the cartoonist for the, for the drop, drop of a hat casually. Yeah, actually, I think we, we are thinking of a uh, discussion, but then we like discuss, this, discuss. no, this but then like it's actually thing. going on. So there's no need of a separate discussion session or anything. But I just have one question yes. about the uh, one of the first few questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, no, I'm no, curious no. to know about how uh, your series of cartoons, the business as usual, evolved, because um, as you know the like the, perhaps the most celebrated or popular cartoonist in India, maybe would be uh, R.K. Lakshman. Yeah. And then he has this middle-aged man, as a common man, as a witness. But then in your cartoons, you chose to have a kind of a schoolboy as a witness. But then like, then there's- He's not a witness, he talks. He talks, yeah, right. But then he is a kind of a participant and the occasionally, okay. not, uh, not every time. I don't have them uh, in every cartoon. Right, right. But then um, there's something that is radically different from R.K. Lakshman's works that is going on in your cartoons, as I see it. Because no, every Indian cartoon has been, cartoons have been different from Lakshman. In, in another sense, Lakshman has been radically different from many of his contemporaries. Most right. of his contemporaries were working. The big ones were working out of Delhi. Right. They had a close to the bones view of Delhi politics and. Lakshman deliberately viewed Indian politics from a distance. Right. And which is how uh, the Bombayite, Mumbaiker viewed Indian politics. Mm -hmm. They were not apolitical. They were interested. They knew that politics would affect their lives. 
but they were not into it in the sense in which a daily journalist or a cartoonist would. Okay. But can you tell more about the formation of the business as usual? Uh, business see? as usual, there's no formation. It's just, there's no deal. I don't know. As I said, I have not researched myself. I don't know what you But can you historically say Character, came, character came because the, I used to work, Vernon and me, we used to work for a Sunday paper called the Sunday Mail, edited by TV astronaut. And Noizab said, you have a pocket cartoon, why don't you think of a character? And I thought, you see, that's a cliche. Also, there's no space also. In my pocket cartoons, I used to bring in recognizable characters, unlike Lishma. It was actually a shrunk political cartoon. I'm basically a political creature. I mean, I like politics as it happens, not in the abstract. So I like this thing. And the point is, you, you have a recognizable character in the cartoon, then a common man. It gets messy. So I try to avoid the editor and avoid the editor's suggestion <laughs> as far as possible on this. But finally, you know, he would whenever he was very, very democratic about it. He said, you know, you can think of something, you know, something which will sustain the interest of the reader. You get a character. We can associate with the paper. Can associate with the character. Build it up and so on. Finally, I, I at the Ames crossing here, I was driving, and red light I stopped, and I found in the it was early afternoon. I found a kid wearing glasses selling newspapers. So that, I said, is a good idea, because you, you, you have a purpose, you have a use. If you have a kid selling newspapers, the kid can bring the news in. So this character started as a newspaper boy. That was the name of the strip earlier. That's how it started. And then it, then it became, you, you, it comes in whenever uh, the kid feels like talking, it comes in. It stayed with me. Lechman's device was very different. Lechman consciously used it without uh, making it after a word, and refused to change it completely. My character is involved, change. Lechman didn't change at all. He didn't change anything except in the first few phases. One at 1951, I think, he started. There were a few months, he, he had a black cap, the guy, that he removed. He didn't, he didn't update it at all. That was his genius. So the, this kid is actually growing? The kid is a male kid. No? Growing. It's not growing at all. It doesn't grow the way uh, um, Doonesbury characters grow, or Gandhi, or Aravindan's characters grow. No, it doesn't. It stays the same old, same young kid. Hmm? Yes. Uh, sir, so uh, I wanted to ask the question around uh, the evolution of art styles and uh, cartooning and like the devices uh, that uh, different cartoonists use, right? So when cartoons initially started, they were used on newspapers and other platforms where you had like limited amount of space or like limited amount of panels in which you had to prepare your cartoon in and get your message out, right? So now when the cartoons are now shifting to a web platform where there is uh, no limitations on how you can use it, it's mostly like a photo sharing app. And so have you seen how uh, cartoon devices or like cartoon art styles or cartoon messaging has changed from the way they were done in newspapers? Or do you think they are using the same styles to the web platform? And do you think it will evolve further in the future? It will certainly evolve. It's still evolving. It has certainly changed radically in the last couple of years because even a strip cartoon which you which you scroll like this, hmm. like we, we scan a cartoon like this. On the web, there are uh, magazines, you know, cartoon magazine called Nib and all that. If you subscribe hmm. to it, you will get it. You'll find panels going like this. It, that, that, the, the, it's like the old Japanese strips, which are vertical. And that's very interesting. It's scrolling like this. It's also like our Patachitras, you know. The, it is very interesting. The, the, the visually, it has changed. You go from frame to frame. I am talking about con uh, sequential cartoons. Uh, standalone cartoons seem to work the same way. There are the advantages. I have an advantage now, which I didn't have earlier, which is that the pocket cartoon uh, used to cartoons got stamp sized, and this was a huge concern in the in the U.S. in the 90s, the Clinton era. One of the ways in which cartoons disappeared was. Uh, when you had technology, better technology, newspapers started processing cartoons, then you could you could play around with the with the uh, with the size of the cartoon any time. The news editor was making up the page earlier. Once the block was made, you could shrink the block. The block was physical earlier. Hmm. Uh, later, it became uh, an offset uh, kind of printing. You could change the size of the cartoon 
because it's scanned. So it got shrunk and shrunk. Four column cartoons were shrunk to two columns and one column and one and a half columns and all that. This sort of a thing was considered a huge threat to cartooning in the West. In the, and it, now it has changed. The digital print, digitally, you can, you can click on a cartoon and blow it up and see it. So that is a big thing. Technology, where technology has actually helped the cartoonist. Uh, so, a similar question on the similar lines, right? As uh, cartoons have shifted to the web platform and uh, they're essentially mostly popular on photo sharing apps like Instagram and uh, maybe Twitter at some level, right? So, with the government now coming in and trying to put in uh, regulations around what kind of posts we can put, what kind of posts uh, would be within their guidelines, and Instagram self uh, regulating all of these guidelines, right? Uh, how do you think, like, would cut, like, when these new data protection laws would come in, or like the privacy laws and all of these things come in by the government, right? Where they would, you know, essentially have a say on what kind of a post can go or not, right? Do you think the cartoonist uh, would again go through a period of like a it very huge censorship? The government has struck in India. It happened in the case of Manju. He lost his contract. Our government has uh, got a great learning curve when it comes to suppression. <laughs> now the next government, what is again? <laughs> we have had, uh, see, uh, I, let me be very clear here. Almost every party that has ruled this country has done something against the press of the cartoon. Without exception. Now, social media. Now, now the, the point is, see, the, now the point is now we have to retrieve it through a, something like a movement. Earlier, you know, emergency one, again, post-emergency, that was the time we all probably went into journalism. There was again a great resurgence of faith in the press and again, you know, affirmation that press freedom should be there and so on, for at least a couple of years. That atmosphere, we got to capture that atmosphere. That, that mood, it's, it's not easy. The point is, we, we have not institutionalized any practice, we have no strong conventions. Unless the courts come in, we are sunk. But you know, all of us keep getting these adverse reactions, starting on social media. Huh? Even I get some WhatsApp forwards and all that. And lots of people are yeah, yeah, the, You can subvert a lot. Yeah, yeah, yes, so yes. That's a good thing. As I said, you know, the more the merrier. You know, as long as you create uh, irreverence, it's good for a cartoonist. It's easier for you to work. At least your editors won't ask you to draw a blank cartoon, you know, a safe cartoon. Some no such thing exists, but. Pen and ink to maybe going to a tab. Have you changed that? I have. You have? Not fully, partly. I do some of my pocket cartoons on the tab. Oh, you do? Uh, or caricatures. You do quickly, do, do it. it's very good to work with the tab. The new tab is the, the, the pencil. Yeah. The stylus yeah. is pressure sensitive. Earlier, it used it to is. be a very even line. Yeah. Now, you can use it the same way as you use the pencil. Ink. Pencil? Oh. Where you can, it can be all your anger and all your <laughs> mischief. The line can more or less reflect. And also good pens and all of some of the pens that I use are calligraphy pens. Yeah. Uh, with a rounded nib. I love those pens. They those rotary like pens. Uh, yeah. Those pens are, uh, you know, you have the nits, the rest of the pen is almost collapsed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Continuous using pen, pens, so you don't get pens. Rotring doesn't make uh, double rod nibs anymore. Yeah. The last rotary nib I got was from Tokyo. Oh. So no more ink on hands. You know, yeah, I do, I do. Most of my work is still pen and ink and pencil and all that, but I said right. I can right. do the other thing also. All right. This is done all this is all done on the process. This is done on the on the tab. We can go to the first page to see your illustration. Where? <laughs> where you say where you say thank you for oh. Kiran Adam Museum of Art to have a glimpse of your work. That is only <laughs> <laughs> Because you are just I mean, not showing your work. We can no, say thank you when the rest of the people have finished qu asking questions. If there are any more questions, then we say the thank you. No, no, no. 
I do what you want yes. to see. Okay. No, no, no. I'm saying that since there are no illustrations of yours this is here. My character. Yeah. Well, so at least not. we have one. Ah, this, this is from my cartoon. Yeah, perfect. This is done on the tab. Yeah. This incidentally was done on the tab. No, the speaker was originally, the character was done on the tab. Um, you can also fontize your handwriting. This is all fontized handwriting. Yeah, I think we are done, no? Light. Information? Ah, yeah, yeah, that is, I think that is, uh, I know that, I, I remember. The Maya Kamath, Maya Kamath cartoon, I know. Before that, it went. Ah, this is, this is. <laughs> overkill, news overkill. Sir, do you have any word of advice for budding cartoonists? Maybe to develop a thick skin or <laughs> no advice? <laughs> cartoonists by nature don't listen to any advice. I didn't when I was young. It's an art of defense, basically. Drawn Modi uh, as a lion and you know lipstick uh, <laughs> with the face of a, a pig and lipstick on the pig. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I know that I don't know who drew him. Mm. I don't. Um, thank you for that last image to leave us with that image. But yeah. thank you for the brilliant audience and I think. The conversation grew so organically. I think it was so beautiful because everybody asked questions, and that is more than what we can ask for. Thank you, Unni sir, for that brilliant um, fielding of questions. <laughs> and uh, may I invite amongst our audience, we have uh, Rubina Karode, ma'am. And uh, she's our chief curator and director of Kiran Nadal Museum of Art. And I would invite her to the stage to facilitate uh, Unni sir with a token of Thank you for... Can I take this off? Yes. Ceremony in there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for. I hope you enjoyed this session. It was really riveting and really very fascinating to hear a view of a cartoonist, especially how subversive, how provocative, how innocent, how wise all of that rolled in one. Just enjoyed it. Thank you so much, sir. My Thank pleasure, you. Thanks pleasure. a lot to the audience, and I think there's some refreshments. Please join us there. Thank you. Thanks, Ratma. Thank you all. Uh, please, uh, the refreshments are waiting after a nice Thanks. discussion. Okay, you got it.